Welcome to Review the PS2, my eternal quest to review every PS2 game. I am not a huge anime watcher. Aside from Dragon Ball, which I saw in bits and pieces, the first anime I really saw was Full Metal Alchemist. Naturally, it's one of my favorites, and when I was a kid and saw that it had a couple of PS2 games, I had to play them. And I was not disappointed. Now, Full Metal Alchemist is pretty popular, but not everyone has seen it, so to bring everyone up to speed, Full Mortal Alchemist is a show about two brothers, Edward and Alphonse, who try to use alchemy to revive their mother, which results in Ed losing his leg and Al losing his entire body. Ed gives up his arm to buy an Al sold to a suit of armor, and they set off to find a way to restore their bodies. The show deals with themes like the value of human life and the human cost of science, and has a lot of cool action. Full Mortal Alchemist and a Broken Angel takes place just after the brothers fix themselves after their fight with Scar. After Ed derails the train, the brothers become stranded in a land that's infested with chimeras and thugs. There they meet an old acquaintance and master alchemist, his strange daughter, and his not at all suspicious assistants. At its core, the story is similar to what happens with Shao Tucker, but it's a better version of that kind of story because you can sympathize with the father, there are actual villains who drive up the stakes at key moments, and there's a general sense of mystery present throughout the story. Many questions are asked, like who made all these chimera, and why? Why won't the professor let his daughter learn alchemy? And why won't Jigen go back to his own show? Needless to say, the story focuses on some of the show's key themes and it keeps true to the spirit of the show by weaving moments of levity into an otherwise serious and emotional story. The story is easy to immerse yourself in and it's one of the game's stronger elements, though it is flawed. None of the dialogue is voice acted outside of these cutscenes. Sometimes the plot is predictable, it takes a long time for the main villain to do anything, and her motivation is weak. Most of the show's villains have good motives, like I want to be like God, I want revenge, and I want. Here it is just I want to be pretty. Please ignore the fact that I'm already kinda hot. The villain sucks, but the story isn't really about her. She exists because the tale of a morally conflicted scientist and his strained relationship with his daughter kinda needs to have a villain so that it can work inside of a beat-em-up. As a game, The Broken Angel holds up. In my review of Dragon Ball Z Sagas, I said that simple combat can work in a beat-em-up if you have other mechanics supporting that simplicity. Sagas could not support its blandness, but this game is a good example of what I meant. Edward is the only playable character. Al is controlled by an AI. You can issue simple commands like come here and tackle to Al, but since his AI is poor, he's mostly useless. Every now and then you can do a cool team attack with Al, but outside of those times, there's no reason to waste healing items on him, so Ed is going to be doing all of the heavy lifting. As Ed, you can make use of your arm blade, alchemy, and various weapons to fight scores of enemies. He controls very easily with simple one-button combos for every main weapon. You won't find uppercuts, trips, aerials, or anything close to death in these combos, and it won't take long for you to become bored. Thankfully, combat is not centered on this mindless button mashing. It's centered on using alchemy to manipulate your surroundings. Shocking, I know. Every level is littered with objects that Ed can transmute into weapons, traps, or turrets. See this lamp? Boom. It's a cannon. Watch out, sword. Ed's gonna make you into a... a sword. You didn't need alchemy for that. You can apply elemental effects to traps or weapons, and most turrets and weapons can be given to Al, and his AI is actually competent with them. Everything from cannons, giant steel balls, and mines, to pogo sticks and fire hydrants are made available to you in great quantity, so you can kill enemies however you wish. Most objects give you some freedom to choose what they become, which allows for greater potential outcomes with alchemy. On the outset, this is great, but alchemy does more than add variety to the game. Often, you'll see large groups of enemies situated near objects that can be transmuted into cannons and vacuums. Make a vacuum, suck in all the enemies, hop in the cannon, and go to town. This kind of synergy between the enemy setups and one of the game's primary mechanics is very satisfying, and alchemy saves this game. Whenever I felt like turning the game off because I was bored, I found that it was because I was just relying on regular weapons and simple combos. When I went back through and made better use of alchemy, I was having a lot of fun, and the contrast between these two playstyles and how that affected my enjoyment is what made me fully appreciate this game. The game wants you to play with alchemy as much as possible, so go wild. There's plenty of bad guys to go around. The enemy design, however, is a mixed bag. When you think about enemy design in a beat-em-up, you tend to think of just a few simple archetypes that get stronger as the game progresses. The Broken Angel does follow this trope, but with its own spin. Enemies fall into two categories, chimeras and dudes. Chimeras are animal hybrids created through alchemy, and they play a major role in the game's plot, so they are everywhere. There are chimeras that fly, chimeras that have shells and have to be flipped over, chimeras that are basically walking tanks, and even chimeras that are spliced together from other chimeras. Creepy. Sometimes they have weird powers and differing resistances to the elements, and there's a good variety in how they engage you. Dudes, on the other hand, carry either melee weapons or guns, and that's it. 
They're basically cannon fodder. Some dudes use alchemy, and as they get stronger, they use different kinds of alchemy. Since they're not just a guy with a weapon, alchemist dudes are the only interesting dudes you fight. I like this guy, whose strategy is to trap me in a cage. Aww. Next time, try an actual attack. The regular enemies will vary in their quality, but the bosses are consistently good. There are a lot of giant chimeras you get to fight, and they all require you to use alchemy to stun them so you can finish them with regular attacks, which is a nice blend of the game's two central mechanics. I like this frog chimera because he shoots these big exploding pellets at you, but you can use alchemy to turn the pellets into bombs and the chimera swallows them like a dodongo. My favorite boss isn't even a chimera. When you first get to the city, you have to beat up a bunch of thugs who keep blocking your path. Turns out they're all alchemists, and they bring a suit of armor to life while using their own unique alchemy attacks against you. The armor is invulnerable and can't be slowed, so you have to fight this trio of alchemists while also staying out of the way of this unstoppable force. I think it's a really interesting idea for a boss fight, and when you return to this area an hour later, the thugs challenge you again, but this time, they animate five suits of armor. It's ridiculous, but also great. The Broken Angels beat-em-up gameplay is complemented by light RPG mechanics. Ed and Al gain experience from downed enemies and level up. Whenever Ed levels up, he gains a varying amount of bonus points. Bonus points can be spent to strengthen Ed's alchemy attacks and can also be used to increase either brother's health, attack, or defense. This system works well and the stat increases feel significant, but the system is held back by the fact that only Ed can earn points. This limits the number of available points, and since I can only play as Ed and the game ends if he dies, I always spend my points on him, not Al. An easy fix for this would have been to just let both brothers earn their own points. Then I could let Al get stronger and make him more useful. But all is not lost for Alphonse. In addition to gaining levels and allocating bonus points, Ed and Al can equip accessories to grow stronger. Accessories are found in treasure chests, can be dropped from enemies, or can be given out as rewards for beating bosses. Most accessories just increase individual stats, but others give you special effects such as piercing attacks, unlimited uses of alchemy weapons, or one-hit kills for Al. The best accessories can only be obtained by beating bosses while underleveled, so if you're like me and like to grind and overpower enemies, you won't get them. Accessories are a simple, fun, and meaningful addition to the game. They help you out when you need a slight boost in stats, and they reward you greatly when you spend the time to find them. Full Metal Alchemist and Broken Angel is a decent game. Its major flaw is the weak melee combat, which is resolved by changing how you approach the game. Some of you might think that it's a big problem if you have to change how you play the game to maneuver around bad gameplay, and you're right, that is a problem. However, I think that what alchemy brings to the table is good and plentiful enough that the poor combat can be overlooked. For that reason, I say the game is worth playing, and if you disagree, you know what to do. And for those of you who need combat that's more fleshed out, the sequel might be for you. Formidable Alchemist 2 Curse of the Crimson Elixir is very similar to the first game. The second game's biggest improvement is the amount of death given to melee combat. This time, they decided to tie the action closer to the source material by having Ed fight like he would in the show. Press triangle at any point in a combo and Ed will use alchemy to alter whatever weapon he's using. This extends the combo and lets you set up for juggles and big payoffs. There are three main weapons Ed can use, a spear, a sword, and a hammer. They fill different roles in combat and their combos can be extended using alchemy. All of these weapons can be made on the spot, which is also a big change. Now you don't have to search for a specific object to turn into a spear, you can just make one out of the ground, which is exactly what Ed does in the show. You can no longer add elements to your weapons, though. That feature was removed entirely, for whatever reason. If Ed is attacked, he actually has a way to dodge now, thanks to the new counter mechanic. Dodging just before getting hit lets Ed do either a cool backflip or a powerful counterattack. Al is mostly the same. You could still give him weapons and have him use turrets, but his role in combat is unchanged. Alchemy is back with some minor changes. There are new types of alchemy, new objects to create, and as Ed levels up in the game, he'll be able to create upgraded versions of some weapons and traps. I think that's the natural evolution of the alchemy mechanic, and it's good. However, you only have the option to transmute an object into one kind of weapon or trap. In the first game, you usually had a choice regarding what the object could turn into. But at the same time, this makes using alchemy easier and faster, so overall, I think the changes made to alchemy are a net positive. Whilst all the changes made to the core of the game are good, they still don't result in a system that's as deep as what other games have. However, I think that the combination of melee combat that can stand on its own and alchemy provides an experience that is unique to this game. The enemy design is more or less the same. The regular dudes are still boring, and most of the time you'll be fighting golems in place of chimeras. Golems are similar to those alchemist thugs in that they have crazy powers that evolve as the game progresses, and they actually put up a bit of a challenge. The bosses are better this time around. Although there aren't many bosses that are similar to the big chimeras, the bosses in this game have interesting attacks, like with this lady who creates pillars in the arena and reflects shots off of them. This game isn't as easy as the first one, and the bosses and enemies play a major role in that. Compared to the first game, the story in the second game is worse in some ways and better in others. We'll start with the good. 
You begin the game with the brothers in Lior and follow some of the show's key moments through to the battle with Scar. After that, the game takes on its own story, and by the time it ends, it actually connects with the beginning of the first game, making this a prequel. Big fan service points here, especially since there are fights against Scar and Armstrong that you don't have to win, but you can certainly try, and you'll get sweet accessories if you do. The villain is more present throughout the story, and some of the story events taken from the show were altered to create a sense of mystery and connect the old story we know to the new story we're about to be told. And the villain is pretty cool, and has a better motivation you could sympathize with. The negative regarding the story would have to be the pacing and emotional investment. The game is split into seven chapters, and it takes four chapters before the new stuff begins. The first half of the game feels long, and the other half feels a bit rushed. As for the emotional investment, the story isn't as sad as the story in the first game, and that's mostly because the story here is about the villain, and not the people the villain is affecting. But it still has its good parts, and it's fully voice acted, which is a definite improvement. And that's the best way to describe this game. It is definitely an improvement over the first one. In the first game, Alchemy acted as a crutch. It was the only thing holding the gameplay together because the alternative to Alchemy was dreadful. But in Curse of the Crimson Elixir, Alchemy acts more as a complement to the melee combat. It works with the combat, but it doesn't replace the combat. If the Broken Angel is too shallow for you, and I totally understand that position, go with this game. It has all of that alchemy goodness packaged with melee combat you can actually have fun with. 